Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is going to be the second installment on uh, the Ford F-150. We're going to put the transmissions in. Well, back up. We're going to clean up some stuff and uh, show you the prep on the uh, crankshaft bolts for the flex plate. Show you the prep on that and uh, we're going to continue on installing this transmission. Hopefully everything is going really smooth. That's what I'm hoping for. Uh, had some issues with torque converter, but that's neither here nor there. I've got torque converter sitting here on the bench. We've got the flex blade sitting here on the bench. Show you what I'm, what I normally do, doing something like that. Uh, real quick, I'm gonna grab a scraper, get some of the mess off this this back plate. Goes on the back of the engine. I clean it up just a little bit, but uh, continuing on. Get us a couple of rags on the bench here already. I got the old scraper, get the camera over here a little bit closer for you. And we are trying out new camera today. See if the audio here is going to be a little bit better. If not, got another little toy for the audio part of it. This, for, for all practical purposes, is a, uh, a shim that goes between the, the mating surfaces on the engine and the transmission. And we don't want any heavy debris that ends up getting caught in between the mounting surfaces. Well, for obvious reasons. You know, we just don't want that. I should have stuck that in the washer. I did not. I figure we'll spend a couple of minutes. It'll be okay. We'll clean it up. Okay, we'll take our flex plate here. Uh, I use this uh, metal bench here, which is fairly straight. Make sure that this thing ain't warped. You know, the table is not perfectly straight. It's straight enough to see to make sure the, the surface that bolts onto your crank uh, crankshaft. Make sure this ain't warped. Uh, inspect for cracks. Make sure that we don't have cracks in here. Inspect your ring gear. Let's have a look at it. And okay, we'll go back. Oh, I forgot I had the folding screen. Ain't that nice? So let's get you in here, guys. I don't know if the camera picks this up. We got a worn flex plate. Edges are gone here too. 
right, right along here. By the looks of it, looking on my screen, it does show like the camera is picking that up just nicely. All right, loving it. But yeah, this is worn. Now, transmission's been to the uh, transmission shop and they told me, in fact, that uh, I guessed at it correctly, you know, it had the reverse band that broke on it, so we knew we knew there was something like that. Uh, now we need to see if we can find the uh, flex plate. Didn't mean to, sorry, I don't mean to ramble on, but anyway, make some calls. Continue on. Okay, folks, we're going to dress it, we're going to use it, show you what we're going to do here. All right, not too bad. So, in reality, we want to go and uh, deburr all these sharp edges that I created now. Well, they were there to begin with, but I just pushed what didn't grind off is actually pushed to the edges of it. Now, I'm going to show you something that you can do to where you don't have to sit there and deburr all these individual teeth. I'm going to delete part of this after after this gets done because of the noise because the air compressor will be kicking on right away. But guys, a knotted wire wheel as it is right here on this grinder. This will do the trick. Well, what we do is we'll go along the edges and that will, believe it or not, this, this wire brush here will deburr all these edges for us really nice, both sides. Like I said, I'm going to cut this part out of the video because of the noise. The compressor is going to kick on here directly. So uh, anyway, this will help you deburr everything really nice. You won't have to worry about the, your starter hanging on sharp edges. edges are gone. Okay. We got the edge of part. Got that part done. Six bolts. Clean them up a little bit. If you see something on there and these come off. Give it a little bit of air. What I'm doing here Prepping these bolts. Threads are clean now. What we're going to do is put us a little spritz of Loctite on this thing. This is the blue. Medium strength. A little bit goes a long way. Put two little lines on it, be just fine, it'll get into those threads. Whoops.
Okay. Back of the engine, make sure that there is no burrs or anything visual sticking up on your crankshaft. And this is also the time we'll need our cover. Double check. Make sure you line this up correctly. That's how the cover goes on there. Flex plate guys. Had some scratches over here. I ground them off. I don't know if you see me do that. Doesn't matter. Anyway, can't mix this one up because the head side is mostly always leaving the impression of the bolts. And the back plate doesn't have both of the dowels. That's why that's why that just happened. There's only one dowel. There's a marker on there. Actually, there is a mark where you know how to how exactly it goes on, but it is a a staggered bolt pattern. You find the bolt, you find your bolt hole here. They're not going to work. They're not going to work. These are all lined up, so that's the that's how it's going to have to go on. Can't go any other way. Okay, let me grab bolts. So now we pretty tighten the bolts. It says these bolts torque to 59 foot pounds. And something I guess worth mentioning, I've always throughout my entire career, I've always unloaded a torque wrench when I get done, when I would get done with them. You know, I've always take them and, and unload them, meaning roll them back to zero or whatever whatever is uh, the lowest number, you know, Ro roll them back, don't leave them sitting on, on a torque setting, I guess, I don't know if that makes sense to you, but yeah, I've always done that throughout my career and I will continue on doing that same thing. And 59 foot-pounds, probably have to hold something somewhere. It says do it in a cross pattern. So go high, go low, go up. All six of them. 
So that part is done. I don't like working like that. I am going to go ahead and remove the uh, the other dowel out of the transmission housing. I'm going to remove it out of there and stick it in here. Uh, I personally think it's easier to do it that way. I don't I don't want to end up uh, fighting the plate. You know, I'll make sure that's held in place. So here's what I was talking about. I'm going to take this now. I'm going to roll it all the way back. I'm going to unload the torque wrench here before I put it back in back up. So this is unloaded, don't go no more. It's basically on zero. See if we can get the dowel out of here. So I'm going to take a punch, see if we can move the dowel easy enough. Yes sir. Came right out of there. Shouldn't have to tell you. Uh, well, I rolled that transmission over here, probably put it in the way. Shouldn't have to tell you this, but uh, make sure that there ain't no scratches on the dowel, or well, not scratches, but burrs that'll hang you up. Make sure it's all been dressed real nice. Dowel goes up here, obviously. When you're hitting the dowel, notice, well, I don't know if the camera, the camera will pick it up, but you can notice the sound. When it bottomed out, the sound will change. I guess what I'm saying is, when the sound changes, quit. I've noticed, uh, well, yeah, I noticed my transmission guy put my shift lever on the wrong way. I forgot to take it off. Oh, that's a... Uh, 15 I believe. Oh yeah, uh, the bolts up there, it's a 19 millimeter. Sorry, forgot to say that. Let's change that shift lever around. I normally do thread locker on the stuff that you really don't want coming off going down the road. I don't know if that makes sense to you, but uh, that's normally what I what I watch for. That's really the only concern that I ever have, you know, is, is have stuff come off going down the road. Some stuff don't matter, some stuff more so. <laughs> but anyway, make sure that everything here is lined up okay. Uh, back to where it needs to be. We got our our spacer plate, we got it in place. Uh, if you follow the bolt holes, they're lined up to the spacer now. That's great. Uh, flex plate on and torqued up. Great. So we got all that. We make sure that our brackets and all that good stuff is going to go go on. Nothing in the way. Everything is in the clear, so at this point in time, I think we're ready to go up with the transmission. Yep, I think we are good to go. Wiring harness is in a good place, so yeah, I do believe we're, we're ready to go up with the transmission. Got to position it. Okay, I think this is close. up with it. So get it up to this point. Uh, oh, I guess I better adjust the camera a little bit. So we're going to get it up to this point right here. Prior to this, I have left the torque converter out of it, did that on purpose. We don't, I, I'm going to make sure that this is 
already close to going where it's going so the torque converter don't has no chance of falling out on me go matter of fact just a little bit higher uh, we put some oil into the torque converter got that done now we carefully insert our torque converter by lightly rotating Okay, like I said, I didn't want anything to happen. This is why I waited to load it. My luck, something would fall out. I'm kind of holding on to the tail end a little bit, give it a little upward uh, angle. Less chance of something falling out on me. Whoopsie, not like that. Okay. Make sure that nothing is gonna hit. Sorry about being in front of the camera. Got no choice. Last thing that we want right now is for something to come undone. Make sure that our wire loom is free. Everything is good. Unload this part here. I think we are good. I hope so. Well, anyway guys, so at this point in time, what we're looking for is to make sure that everything is clear, which it should be, you know, everything is, is close now. We're, we're getting real close to where we need to be. I'm going to go ahead and move the camera out of the way. I don't want to trip over the camera. I don't want to uh, end up, uh, you know, doing something else that shouldn't be happening. <laughs> but anyway, I'm going to... Turn the camera off for a minute and get that set up. Turn the camera back on. Uh, just uh, not not that we need to turn the camera off off, but just to save save some time too. I mean, at this point in time, it's a matter of getting it in the place and and setting it up and get a bolt started on it. That that's where we're at right now. So I don't know how good that will show up, but this is a Ford. This one doesn't have bolts, it has studs on the converter. I've got everything set right where it needs to be. I rolled my converter to where it should slip right into those holes. I'm really close now. Turn the camera back off because I cannot get the camera in here. So, got a little bit late last night on me, so uh, this is actually another day. I've got the transmission set up there. We have uh, four bolts, but midways in the case there. So, that'll hold that up good. I think at this point in time, you know, kind of, I, I think we'll be all right to take the jack off of it. You know, it's not going anywhere. It's not going to hurt anything. This transmission here is not not really heavy. Um, and besides, you know, it's not going to. We're not going to leave it hanging a long time. I still got to route the cable back over the top. Uh, put the up here on top. We'll put the fuel line clip on the back stud here. We've got to get a. Uh, clip up there that holds the wire we're gonna have to get that in there we've got to get our bolts in the shift linkage bracket we got to do that none of that's going to take too shouldn't take too long Remember, if 
goes over and under, it goes under actually. So. That's how that sits and there's a clip up top. did notice uh, there is one little clip missing. We're going to see if we can wire tie that on. Slip this back in. Got to get the nut on it. Got to fish the dipstick back in there. I got to fish that back through there and get it stuck in there. Uh, but yeah. I mean, it's going to be tight. I can't put the camera on on most of that, you know. But I, I'll leave it rolling. See what see what happens. The uh, torque converter nuts. I haven't put them on. They're just a. I don't know if this will show or not, but they're just locking nuts to make sure you you put the put the locking nuts back on it wouldn't be too good if you put regular nut on it and it ends up coming loose on you uh, that wouldn't be cool at all like I said I haven't put them in yet Let's see if I can get you actually an actual shot of it here see where I'm while I'm working. So, let me flip my screen. Oh yeah. So this this is where I'm working. Really easy to get to. Well, not a big deal there. He said you got four of them, just snug them up and then we'll roll it one more time and torque them, torque them up. All I'm doing is uh, sticking a pry bar up there to bar it like so that's all I'm doing I'll lay this back down may be able to put the camera back here I don't know I might be able to see that yeah not real good but I think We got one more to go. And there that is. Number four. look up the torque converter all right I finally found it <laughs> uh, torque converter nuts it says 27 foot-pounds may have to put the bar in there nope we can bottom out on the side there that works fine so there's number one here's a little here's a little tip a lot of times when torquing something, if you mark what you've torqued, or like a paint marker or something to that effect, 
you actually know that you've done it. It's not necessary, of course, but not a bad idea to go ahead and verify. There that is. That's number two. We'll go ahead and mark that. Sometimes I do mark, sometimes I don't. You know, but it, it's not a bad idea to go ahead and do it. There is number three. that one number four coming up no paint mark on it so we know in fact that I didn't skip okay that one is torqued up Roll it one more time, back to the paint mark. So we know we did our four bolts. Uh, kind of a kind of commercialized thing as well. You know, if something, if you're doing it for yourself, obviously it don't matter. But uh, in in sort of a commercial setting, uh, if something happens, you know, somebody can say, "Well, you didn't torque the bolt," you know, because there there's the reason that I know that it was torqued. And I mean, nobody would sit there and mark something. If they didn't didn't torque it, I, I would think. you guys back over here yeah a lot of that you know is gonna be well you can't see it I can't get the camera in there really to to really really show you so I'll leave the camera going I guess we'll see see what happens uh, gotta get the bolts in there gotta get brackets in like I said you know just follow along if you want to I said earlier we can remove that jack I'm gonna go ahead and remove it it's not gonna hurt anything now it's not gonna break anything that transmission is not heavy enough to to make a difference So far, I'm liking the new camera. I hope that turns out real good. I would love it if it would. GoPro had some bad audio issues, but that's not, that wasn't the problem. The problem with the GoPro for me was the fact that my eyes are bad, I can't see the screen, and it got kind of frustrating. So, this thing here got a lot bigger screen.
putting the shift linkage bracket back on. bolts uh, oops well, that was the wrong bolt That's another Ford exclusive right there. Let me get this one bolt back out. I don't know. I don't know if I reverse that bolt that's now or not. Okay, yes I did. Okay, get this in here. Big old water grease just got in my shirt sleeve. Man, man, man. Gonna have to do a little bit something with that. I don't know. Oh, yeah, camera's picking that up fine too. Focus, focus. It's up here. Up there on top, the cable is, the shift cable is nearly rubbed through where it's sitting here on the, on the exhaust. It's rubbing over here on the tip. So I want to see if we can't put a little zip tie, a zip tie to that eyelet right there and, and get it out of the way so it don't get on that exhaust anymore.
Oh. I'm gonna zip the pan off of here now real quick and uh, put our filter in so I don't forget to do that Well, I did not think uh, he put it in, but I guess the uh, rebuild it on put filter in it, so, well, saved me from having to do that. We'll go ahead and wipe that down. The gasket is reusable. Make sure that the edges, the, the elevations here, make sure that they have elevation. With other words, make sure it's not all flattened out. So as long as uh, it looks like this here, I don't know how good the camera gonna pick it up, but anyway, if you have elevation on these little humps here, it's good to go. It ain't gonna leak.
never force the bolts in. This is aluminum, so if you think it's too tight, it probably is. Okay, got all the bolts tight. Show you something on this side right here. These little units right here are the cooler lines. Uh, we done, I did that off camera. We done one ahead and uh, hooked or blowed air through here and let all that come out. Just blow with the air nozzle blowing here into those cooler lines. So get all the old transmission fluid out of there and uh, we put some alcohol through the lines help cleaning it out did that with the syringe that I got you may want to do that when you're working on a transmission so right now we got the filter in we've got the pan tightened up we're moving we have the, the bottom over here on the side tightened up now before we do anything with the starter and these lines, I'm going to go ahead and fish the uh, dipstick tube back in there, fish it in there, get it mounted up top, get the, uh, the wire loom right there, get that uh, bolted up on top since we don't have the bolts on the top of the transmission on top of the bell housing yet. We'll go do that, do that off camera. I can't get you up there and me doing the work. so. We'll continue this as soon as I get that done. So, battery about gone. I'm going to have to plug this in. I peeled a bunch of silicone off of this uh, dipstick tube a while ago. I thought, well, that's odd. Normally, you replace the O-ring, but then I seen... Let me flip that screen around here so I can see. So, then I realized, yeah, I see why. We've got a bent dipstick here on the bottom. It's all crooked, so whoever took it out at one point in time they bent the whole lower part here and it's it pinching the o-ring on one side it's not on the other so that's the reason why they had all the silicone around it i'm going to see if i can straighten it just a little bit put a new o-ring on it so what i ended up doing i think i got it fairly close I don't know if the camera is going to pick that up real good, but anyway, uh, I found me a 18mm uh, 12 point socket, I slipped it on, 
and just bends it back and it didn't damage anything and I got the o-ring groove what I believe pretty even again looks pretty straight to me so I'm gonna replace the o-ring hopefully that'll work we replaced the o-ring with a this is called a Viton material this is not your black these are actually brown in color when you pick them up in uh, at Harbor Freight they got a nice assortment of them they're better better o-rings than the black you're a little bit more heat resistant that's what we want in the transmission so we'll try to stick that in there see if we get everything lined up oh so I'm plugged in the camera I'm talking about so the fuel line bracket when you're looking from the rear here it is on the top left driver side looking from the rear there is a bracket that holds the wires in the wire loom in place and also the fuel line clips into it got that mounted we mounted over here we mounted our starter and our ground cable is fixing to be next so we're going to put the bolt in it the cooler lines is going to be the last thing that you want to hook up because of uh, the starter it's much easier to get the starter back in if you leave the cooler lines till last uh, we put our dipstick tube in it seemed to slip in really easy it hooks up also on top of the bell housing here but not the very top on the passenger side it's the one below it it bolts in along with this looks really straight down here on the bottom I can't move the camera around because I got plugged in like I said but take my word for it it looks real good down here on the bottom looks like it's nicely aligned uh, need to find a nut for my ground wire had to lower the truck a little bit actually it was up too high couldn't reach but anyway that's neither here nor there uh, 13 mil on the ground wire it's attached over here on the bottom of the starter starter stud put that on real quick make sure you get it tight don't rip it off we can plug our main harness in Okay, that's plugged back in. Leave the oxygen sensor dangling. It's fine. At this point in time, we've got everything hooked up around. We're going to go ahead and put our cooler lines back into place. Bolt them up. Tell you the truth, I forgot what they are. I think they're 16 mil. I think so. It's been a few days since I've worked on this, so I can't remember everything. But yeah, that's 16 mil. We'll get these here. This is a flare fitting, so don't go full bear on this thing go grizzly bear on it and something is going to break his flare fittings do not need to be tightened up all that tight I mean that's nature of a flare fitting it doesn't have to be that tight Tug. 
So now that is attached again. Thankfully the exhaust studs did not break. I'm glad they didn't because they're kind of pain in the neck to get. So move you guys back over. Double check, make sure everything is clipped in, hooked up, good to go. We gotta mount our cover. Okay, got the cover back on, got the bottom plug to put back in, I dropped it, I don't know where it dropped, there it is, I'll have to sneak it back in here. this bottom plug over here kind of get that in the shot we'll try to anyway uh, that bottom plug right here it's a rubber plug that is how you check your ring gear if starter is just free spinning Oh, oh, that thing is nasty. Keeping in mind that the exhaust is going to have to go on before you reattach the cross member. Uh, you may use a standard jack or whatever. You've got to manipulate the transmission a little bit to get the exhaust wiggled back in there I'm sure but yeah other than that guys this is about to wrap up we've got our shifter linkage attached already plugs are back in and we we'll to move on sure that the heat shield gets put back in place guess I have to move you guys back a little bit you can see I'm gonna see a whole lot back here but hopefully that'll work shows you how light that assembly is here really it's not that big of a deal to 
get um, get it lifted up in the back. There's not that much weight hanging. This is honestly the part that I was sort of dreading most. is back in this looks good here give it one more check got a little bit paranoid about that kind of stuff by the way flip my screen see if I can see this this is what they look like we'll sit up here and they'll go in the subframe of course you put the subframe on now we'll have to go uh, Let's get a jack over to do the subframe. Move you guys back just a little bit so I don't bump the camera over. This only fits one way. There is actually a long and a short side. your holds it goes without saying Trying to find my little hole here for my heat shield. A little elusive. There we go, found it. 
put the heat shield back in there. Well, then my little hole might have disappeared. There it is. Found it, guys. Found it, found it, found it, found it, found it. Found it. Well, somewhere. That's an elusive little critter. Heat shields back on. Fifteen mil on one side, eighteen on the other, eighteen on the nut side. I think these are eighteen for the transmission. Okay. Let this back here settle out, kind of tap it a little bit. We'll go to the front, tighten up our nuts up here, give it a visual, make sure it is sitting on the cone the way it's supposed to. Looks like it is. I got an absolute mess on this here table.
Okay, touching the cone real nice. Kind of make sure that the stud that's sticking out, make sure that's kind of the same length on both sides. So you have a lot more sticking out on, on the top than what you do on the bottom or vice versa. Uh, something's not right. You know, most of pen, something is not right. Now we're going to give that a little bit of lube. Spray these clamps a little bit. Fifteen mil. Thirteen on the other. Maybe it's a 15 mil on that one too. It just rusted away. Yeah. Got an ugly muck shot just then. So we'll try 14. See if 14 fits it. Can't remember what I did. 14 fits it. Don't be careful with it. Don't want to rip it off. Doesn't look like it's loose. So good to go there. Uh, this thing here has got carrier bearing. One of the bolts is in it because the carrier bearing is actually slotted on one side. So you slip it in, hook it up, and that'll get that done. I'm going to get you all out of the way now. So, okay. Drive shaft back in, hooked up up here. Uh, you need a 12 millimeter, 12 point. In case I didn't say that in the removal video. Uh, everything here hooked back up. Heat shields back in place. Exhaust is all tightened up. Needs to be. Our lines are tightened up. Our covers has been replaced. Everything up here is plugged in. Always double, triple check that stuff so you don't have to get back under it. But yay, it's time for that to come out. Actually, time for the truck to come on down. I'll put some of the uh, tools up, wipe them off a little bit, wash my hands. Got a uh, filter kit earlier. Gonna have to return it though, because I didn't realize that he already put filter in it. Kind of odd, he put filter in it and then didn't torque the uh, fan bolts down. But uh, well, 
whatever. So we had some transmission fluid in the uh, in the torque converter. I think it's calling for 14. It's calling for 14 quarts on a rebuild. So I've got us 10. We can add if we need to. Make sure we're not leaking it out somewhere really obvious. That would be bad. Aluminum hood, that ain't gonna work there. Hot rod. Uh, Check the ground in between. Make sure there's nothing that just pouring out, which would be horrible. And uh, I'm gonna give that a light crank. Don't know if the battery is any good, but I'm gonna give it a light crank and see what it's gonna what it's gonna do for us. We certainly got some rattling going on. Well, now I've got ten quarts in the transmission. We may be a quart or two low. Shouldn't be no more than that since the torque converter had uh, transmission fluid already in it. Got some ticking going on up front. Hope that's what it is anyway.
that's definitely in the front there. Got some lifter noise or something. say the thing is probably low on oil. I'll go ahead and shut that beast down and uh, check the oil level when it's not running. Transmission going from drive into reverse. It's picking up really quick. Actually going into gear real well. So hopefully that's going to be a good thing for us. Need to need to check the oil issue out. I don't want to run this thing out of oil right here in, in my shop. It wasn't showing nothing on the dipstick a while ago. Running that is. Unbelievable. I still don't got no oil on the dipstick, which doesn't really surprise me considering the the amount of oil leak it has. I did tighten pan bolts up a little bit. We did that. Uh, well, it looks like we're going to go ahead and do oil change real quick. Go down here, get us filter, throw some oil in this beast, and. Uh, do it, do that service as well. I have nothing on the dipstick. Good God Almighty. All right, fixing to go up. All right, get you guys in there. 15 mil on the plug. I don't know why I'm shouting, but. Get the oil drained out of here. Or at least, let's see. <laughs> uh, that's lucky to have... Uh, I don't know how they drove it over here. They actually drove it over here. That thing is lucky to have a quart of oil in it. Good God Almighty. I'm going to replace the uh, 520 over here. Uh, I'm going to replace it with a 530. Stupid Ford oil pan. Well, the good news is there's nothing gushing out of the transmission. 
seems like my dipstick tube here was a fix. I don't see any leaks. Better get a light though. Gotten a lot cooler outside again, so close that door up again here in a little bit, get the hose on it and start it back up. Yeah guys, uh, I think my dipstick here, that was a fix. I don't see anything leaking. Of course it's not hot yet, you know, we're going to check it again. We're going to get the truck in here again and check it. As uh, far as the oil, if we got a quart, quart and a half out of this engine, it would surprise me. So. I'm going to get a uh, filter on the way, get some oil on the way, and we'll do it again. So, got the filter on the truck, put the oil in it. I switched from the usual 520, switched it to 530. This is just conventional cheap oil. As much as it's leaking, I wouldn't put any kind of good oil in it. Of course, we'll replace the filter. I don't know if I said that. I'll put the exhaust hose on so we don't suffocate it here. That sounds a little bit better. I don't know how good the camera is picking it up. It does sound a little bit better, but it doesn't sound good yet. At least at this point in time, we do know that the truck does have oil in it. down quite a bit. I still hear what, what I think to be valve train noises. Don't sound like we got any exhaust leaks, so that seemed to be good. camera back off. We gotta warm this thing up. I'm gonna take take a little bit of a break till this thing gets good and warm. I don't think that camera is ever gonna pick this up but anyway read on the dipstick right there it says they want to check it idling in park with the transmission hot. And if you anywhere in the crosshatch area, it's from right there in front of that um, first dot up to the full mark. If it's anywhere in that area, do not add anything else to it.
on the tip. on the tip so we're going to have to add some fluid to it. I'm probably going to end up getting two, uh, two or three more. Get them dumped in there. heating up. You can tell on the dipstick how this unit is heating up. Actually, I'm going to leave the dipstick out since we've got to add some more to it anyway. Ford up there, but I'm not even going to mess with it. Just going to go ahead and get a couple more and be done. And also, I guess we could say this too, that now that the engine is fully warmed up, our uh, knocking or, well, ticking, whatever, it actually went away. So that's, that's a good thing. It's actually running actually really, really smooth right now. Not shaking or anything like that, but uh, uh, anytime you add oil to an engine, probably a good thing. Okay, so we just uh, took the truck out for a little spin. Did a little bit of hot rod with it. Make sure that the uh, reverse is actually working. I've got... Uh, Give this a little bit of a sweeping real quick, and uh, I got another truck right behind it. So, thanks guys for watching. Subscribe, all the good stuff. Give us thumbs up, thumbs down, whatever. See y'all next time.